Okay, now can you do basic math calculations in your head? Well, if you're not sure, go ahead and try this problem right here. And the problem is three eighths of a day is what time? In other words, what time is it after three eighths of a day has passed by or elapsed? Now, the only rule to do this uh, or to answer this particular question is no calculators and no paper or pencils, okay, or pens. Just We're just going to use our brains. We're going to be doing what we call mental math, okay? Now, some of you might be saying, well, what's the whole point of this? Well, there's going to be uh, times, and we just never know when this happens. Well, we just don't have a calculator. We don't have a phone. You don't have anything around, and you want to be able to kind of do some quick basic math calculations in our brains. And if we don't practice this, we're never going to get better at it. But uh, anyways, I'm going to show you the right answer. And of course, I'll walk through the solution step by step in just one second. But uh, before we do that, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if you like this video, you enjoy it, you get something out of it, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the answer here. And by the way, don't feel rushed. Uh, if you gotta kind of stop and think about this, you know, that's perfectly fine. There is no kind of, uh, you know, timer on figuring this problem out. So if you need a little bit more time, that's perfectly fine. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer anyways. The correct answer is 9 a.m. Now, I'm pretty confident that about 100% of you out there could get this right. Okay, with enough time, you would be able to figure it out. But uh, for those of you that were like, yes, indeed, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I did this in like five seconds or 3.2 seconds. I must, uh, you know, uh, congratulate you on your success with a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of mental mathematics. Now, there are some very gifted people out there that can do, uh, you know, a lot in their mind's eye. Okay. And don't feel bad if you're not one of these folks, right? In other words, it doesn't make you um, bad at math or, you know, it doesn't make you anything less of a person if you can't do these mental calculations, right? But uh, it is something that if you practice enough, you will get better. And it's a pretty valuable kind of skill to have to be able to do some basic math in your brain. And I think this particular problem is uh, certainly reasonable enough for most of you out there should be able to get it right, okay? But don't feel bad. If you're not like uh, that guy in that movie, I believe the movie was Rain Man, right? You're able to kind of do all these calculations out there. Again, there are people that are out there. Uh, those are truly gifted people. But uh, let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. And here's one thing. When it comes to how to do this problem, again, this is a mental math problem. The way your brain looks at things will be different than mine. Of course, the math here is going to be kind of, you know, your, uh, universal in terms of what we have to do. But uh, the way you th think about the problem, all right, doesn't have to be the way I think about the problem, all right? So again, there is a little bit of, uh, you know, this creativity kind of going on here. But let me show you the way, you know, my brain approaches a problem like this. Okay, so I have three-eighths of a day. I want to know what time it is. So I'm like, oh, we want to, we're talking about time. What time is it? So for me, in my brain, when I hear about time, I'm thinking about a timepiece, right? So, you know, I'm kind of aging myself here. Matter of fact, I saw an article uh, some time back that many young people these days cannot read uh, a clock like this with the hour and minute hands, okay? So that might seem alarming for some of our uh, older folks out there, but you think about it, you just don't see clocks out there that much. But anyways, I don't want to go off on a, too much of a tangent here, but again, this problem involves time. So in instantly for me, I'm like, all right, I'm thinking about a clock, right? Okay. Now, again, this is the way I'm thinking about it, and I'm kind of taking a nice, slow approach to this problem for those of you that might have had a little bit of uh, difficulty, you know, figuring out how to get to the solution. But now, the next thing that I have to kind of consider, and you have to consider as well, is we're, we're talking about, all right, um, you know, how much time has elapsed from the start of a day, okay? So, three-eighths 
of the day has passed by, but where does the day start? Well, you kind of have to go back and think about our clock here, and I'm going to go back to my 11 o'clock, and I'm thinking, about, oh, what about New Year's, right? When uh, every, you know, everyone celebrates you know, Happy New Year's, it happens at midnight, okay? So a new day starts at 12 midnight, all right? That's when a new day starts. So uh, the time it currently is, after a certain amount of time has elapsed, it's going to be, the starting point is going to be 12 midnight, okay? So we need to think about, all right, so from 12 midnight, what is three-eighths of a day? Okay, how much time is that? And uh, that's what we're going to have to determine next. Okay, so three-eighths of a day. Well, now I'm thinking about, well, how do we read time? Okay, like what time is it? Well, if I, you know, if you ask me what time is, time is it, I might say, well, it's 7.13 p.m. Okay, when we talk about time, we're talking about hours and we're talking about minutes. We're not talking about seconds and we're not talking about days, right? We're not going to say, oh, uh, what time is it? Well, it's half a day. That's what time it is. You <laughs> know, We're not going to say that, right? We're going to generally describe time in hours and minutes. So three-eighths of a day, I'm going to think of a day in terms of 24 hours, right? So the first calculation that we need to do is we got to figure out what is three-eighths of 24 hours, right? That's the first thing that we need to do here, okay? Because that's how much time is elapsed. Now, uh, the starting point, again, is going to be midnight, but we have to do this calculation first. All right, now, if you're saying, yes, indeed, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is what I did, and I think this is probably the most challenging mental uh, aspect of this uh, particular uh, prom is to figure out what is three eighths of 24. And I'm going to get to that next, but, uh, uh, let me go ahead and just actually show you this here right now. Uh, this part of the problem, okay, is where a lot of you that don't like fractions or might be intimidated, uh, in this problem because we have three eighths involved, this is where you need to make your life a lot easier with fractions. Okay, so if I want to find 3 eighths of 24, and that's what I want to do here, right? So 3 eighths of 24 hours, I'm trying to find out what is 3 eighths of 24. So technically, what I want to do is take 3 eighths and multiply it by 24 or 24 over 1. Now, I'm not going to take 3 and multiply it by 24 and then divide that by 8. That's too much math calculation. The whole point of this problem, okay, is to have you say, all right, what's three eighths of 24? What you want to do in your mind's eye is say, all right, 24, okay, uh, can I divide eight into 24? Yes, right? So 24 divided by eight, you want to see this problem, not so much this problem, right? Now, again, this is the way I see it, but I, you know, if you didn't have a way of figuring this out, look at it this way. When you're multiplying fractions, kind of think of it this way. And you want to kind of do some cross canceling. All right. So instead of multiplying across, you want to take this number and, and just kind of say, all right, can I divide this denominator here into this number? All right. So three eighths of 24, you're like, all right, 24 divided by eight. Okay. Can I take 24 divided by eight? Yes. All right. And the answer is three. Okay, 24 divided by 8 is 3. Now, what's going on here technically, all right, if you want to get very technical about it, 24 is the same thing as 8 times 3. What you're doing is cross-canceling like factors. So this is going to be 3 times 3. But, you know, you don't want to go through all that in your brain. You're just going to say, all right, 24, 3 eighths of 24. So let me say 24 divided by 8. Or can I take 24 divided by 8? Yes, it, I can. It's 3. So now I have 3 here. And I have this 3 in the numerator, so 3 times 3 is 9, okay? So that's probably the most challenging uh, mental aspect of this problem, okay? Again, if you didn't know how to multiply fractions, of course, you're going to be lost here. But if you're, you know, pretty good with fractions, you should hopefully uh, be able to figure this out. Okay, so 3 eighths of 24 hours is 9 hours. Okay, so that's how much time has passed by, but again, we want to know what actual time is it after three-eighths of the day has passed by. So now we could take this answer and uh, actually, you know, finish the question. But before we do that, I'd like uh, you, if you don't mind, to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. This really does help me. My objective is to grow my YouTube channel as big as I can because I'm trying to reach people who are either one, interested in math or need help in math. 
And by you doing this, and by you subscribing, it does help that YouTube algorithm kind of push out my videos further out there. So thank you so much. Matter of fact, this is the way I look right now by you hitting that subscribe button. All right, so let's get uh, back to this prom and we're almost there, not that difficult. Okay, so we figured out that three eighths, again, three eighths of the day, or three eighths of 24 hours, excuse me, is nine hours. But the question is, what time is it? Okay, after three eighths of the day has passed by. Well, if the day starts here at midnight, this is the morning, right? So nine hours is gonna pass by. So 12 to six, that's six hours. We go another three hours, that's nine. So nine hours from midnight is nine o'clock, but it's 9 a.m., right? So if you just put nine, uh, I would say that you, yeah, I would probably give you full credit, but you wanna be specific here. Uh, so this is 9 a.m., nine o'clock in the morning. Okay, now a lot of you uh, might be saying, oh, I figured this out in like four seconds. This is such a long explanation. Well, you know, that's very good. Well, I too could figure this problem out in, you know, 3.6 seconds. But the whole idea here is to try to give you some uh, strategies to think about calculations, especially when it comes to fractions, uh, like, you know, trying to find a fraction of a number or a percent of a number, for example, I'll just kind of go off on a quick tangent here. If you were asked to find 25% of uh, 200, right? So if you're, you know, you had to do this mentally, what you want to do here is all different sorts of ways you could do this, right? 25%, you could be like, well, what's 50% uh, of 200? Well, 50% of 200, you cut that in half, right? So that's 100. And then uh, what's, okay, if this is 50% of 200, then what's half of that, which again would be 25% uh, percent would be half of 50, so it'd be like, oh, it is 50, okay? So 50 would be 25% of 200. Now, that's one mental math approach, okay? So now, some of you could be like, well, this is one-fourth, 25% is the same thing as one-fourth, so one-fourth of 200, and you could be like, all right, uh, 200 divided by four is what? Well, let's see here, 200 or 20 divided by four is five, so this is 50, okay? So again, different ways to approach uh, problems mentally, okay? The whole objective is, is uh, you know, obviously to get the right answer, but if you don't practice this stuff, you're never gonna get better uh, at it, and it is a useful skill, okay, to be able to do some mental mathematics. Now, if you want to prove in just basic math, right, if you're like, well, I don't even know fractions, I need help with basic math, uh, let me go ahead and uh, give you a suggestion. I have a great uh, mini math course. It's called my Math Foundations course. You'll find a link to it in the description below, but it's all basic math, percent, decimals, fractions, order of operations. Very useful uh, course for those of you that want to improve in mathematics. Uh, you want to make sure you have the foundations down before you move on to more exciting things like algebra. But I also have a ton of additional kind of problems like this on my YouTube channel that you can practice as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.